If you build websites, chances are you've already been through a situation like this. Hello, yes sir, I'm super excited to start working on your website. This website is very important for my family, my family, if you know what I mean. We are counting on you not to disappoint with the new design, got it? Oh yeah, I'm full of inspiration for the new design, I can't wait to show it to you. Yeah, talk to you soon, thank you. I have no idea. We've all been there. And if by any chance you haven't, well, it's just a matter of time. And today I will show you how to streamline your website design inspiration process once and for all. And all of that with free tools. Hello, I'm Kay from the Acer team. And before I made videos on YouTube, I ran my own web design business, serving many customers by building modern and professional websites. And one of the issues I ran into from the very beginning was how to streamline the inspiration process. I did find resources to get daily inspiration. And later in this video, I will share with you some of the best ones to make your life easier. But the problem didn't lie there. I quickly realized I needed an easy way to document and quickly access the various bits of inspiration that I would come across. I tried everything like dedicated tools that were since discontinued, I tried browser extensions, and I even built my own dynamic website, which was basically my own private version of website design galleries like awards.com. Simpler of course, but same concept. And just for me. So this was my own inspiration tool. Now the issue was that adding new entries, or for this video we'll call them inspiration bits, was way too long. And at the end of the day I ended up not adding any, and basically not using the tool anymore. Actually in the end I just ended up creating various mood boards, or another way I would do it is that I would create notes. Basically, I would organize the notes per month with keywords and when a new project would come in, well, I would just open the links one by one and get my inspiration from there. It kind of worked, but it's definitely not the best way of doing things. Quite the opposite. Now, fast forward to today where we can use a couple of free tools to build a powerful swipe file. And if you're wondering, a swipe file is a collection of marketing materials that can be used as inspiration and a reference for content creation, allowing a web designer to quickly pull relevant ideas and inspirations leading to innovative designs and to a lot of time saved. The first free tool is a browser extension called Awesome Screenshot, which you can install on several browsers. So just head to Google and type Awesome Screenshot. So I'm gonna click here on the link and just click on Add to Chrome. And actually I'll be using this tool on two different browsers for demo purposes. Right now I'm in Brave, but Brave can use the Chrome extensions. So let me click on Add to Brave and Add Extension. It's asking me to sign in, but I can just skip. And now it's instructing me to pin the extension. Not sure that's mandatory, but let me do it. So let me pin it. Next, grant access and click allow. Now let me go back to full screen. And now it's asking me to add some more stuff, but I'm just going to skip it. And there you go, quick and easy. Now there is one setting we're going to change. So let me go back here, open the extensions icon and click on Awesome Screen Recorder. And here at the bottom, you see the Options icon, so click on it. And now I'm going to scroll down and where you see Saving Preferences, you wanna save the screenshot as JPEG instead of PNG. And the reason is simply that the JPEG is going to have a lower file size. That will make sense with the second tool we're going to use. Because the second tool we're going to use is a free tool called Notion. And in its free version, you are limited to five megabytes per file that you upload. So this is the reason why we changed from PNG format to JPEG format. So that the screenshots we're going to take as the inspiration bits are under five megabytes. Now, of course, if you have the pro version of Notion, you're not limited by this file size. But if you're using the free version, changing this setting is very handy. Now, if it's your first time hearing about Notion, Notion is a workspace for note-taking, knowledge, data management, as well as project and task management. Now, let me show you how easy it is to create a swipe file with Notion. So first of all, go to Google and type Notion, then click on the first link, and you can create a free account with your Google account, for example. So click on Login, and you can create with Google, Apple, or single sign-on. So I'm going to choose Google, choose the account you want to use, and click on Continue. Now choose an option here and click on continue. 
Choose team or on your own. I choose on my own. Continue. And more questions. Now I'm just going to skip this. Let me just select the projects. Continue. And my space is going to be called K. Then click on continue. Now it's prompting me to go for the plus plan, but no, 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 we want free here. So I'm going to click on no thanks, continue to free plan. And there you go. So initially they ask a lot of questions, but you only need to do this once. And now you're in completely free of charge. So first of all, here is the private. I'm going to click on the plus sign, add a page and let me call it inspiration. Now you may want to call it swipe file, but I choose to call it inspiration. Next, I'm going to click here, then click on the plus sign, and I'm just going to start typing DB. DB stands for database, and we're going to choose the first one, database inline. So that database is going to help us organize our swipe file. It's going to make sense in a moment. So here you see link or create a database, click on it. And right here, you see the three dots. You want to change the layout and select gallery. Now let's go back one step. Then click on properties. And as you can see, the only property we have right now is the name. So click on new property and select date. Now for the date format, I'm going to choose year, month, day. All right. Now let me go back one step. And now if I close this, click on add new page, you see I have the name on top here and then the date. So it worked. Now we're not done. Let me close this and I'm just going to hover over the three dots and delete this card. Now hover over the top here. Once again, click on the three dots, properties, click on add new, and let's start typing tags. And I want to add a tag property. So if I go back, now I'm going to type URL and add a URL property. Now let me go back one more time and I'm going to type select. Let me select it, no pun intended. And there where you see options, I'm going to add a couple of options. The first option is hero, which stands for the hero section, which is the main section you see on the web page. The first section you see, which is nowadays usually bold with a big image, but your mileage may vary. All right. So let me type enter. Now let me add another one called page and let me type enter. Now we can add a lot more, but I want to keep it simple here. Now that's going to help us to categorize the various inspiration bits within our database. Now there are several ways you could organize the database. This is my way of doing it, but you can organize it just with tags. It's really up to you, but I'm going to show you my way. Okay. Let's go back. Let's close this and let's add new entries. So my first inspiration bit is this gorgeous hero section. So let me get out of full screen. And I'm just going to click here on the awesome screenshot extension. Make sure I click on capture because by default it's on record. So let me go back to capture and I can either use visible part, which is what I see right now, full page or selected area. In my case, I just want the visible part. So let me click on it and there you go. So what I can do is just click on copy. Then let me go back to my notion tab, click on add new. I'm going to call it Sigony Hero. Sigony is the name of the website, the date. And the reason why I use dates and you don't have to do it is because maybe one year from now, I want to know, hey, what happened in January? What was trending or what did I like that month? Just helping me to organize things further. Next, we have our select field. Actually, we should rename it to type. Enter. So for type, I'm going to click here. And in our case, it's a hero section. Next, I'm just going to copy the URL and paste it here. And now for the tag, well, I'm going to add colorful. For the tag, I realized I made a mistake. So let me click on tag, edit property. And see for the type of property, it's set to text. Now let's change this to multi-select. And now let me type colorful, enter, and there you go. It created a new tag called colorful. Now let me look again at this gorgeous hero. I could add a color like pink. So let me do that and enter. 
And of course you can add a lot more. Now, if you recall, when we use awesome screenshot, we use the copy button. Actually, let me do it again. Now, let me go back to inspiration and right where you see press enter to continue. I'm just going to click here and hit paste. And there you go. Here's my image. So now I can close it and voila. Now here we can change the database file. So click on edit and I can call it swipe file, for example, or I can call it inspiration DB. Now let me add a new page. So first of all, I'm going to close this one, close this, and this is our new page. So I'm just going to close this. And here I want the whole page and not just the hero section. So once again, I'm going to click on the awesome screenshot extension and this time I want full page. So let me click on it. And now the extension is going to do its own thing. So make sure you don't scroll or move your mouse while it's doing its thing. All right, great. So now once again, I can hit copy, but because this is a full page and because we're using the free version of Notion, this file might be over the five megabytes limit. So let me show you what to do. So let me go back to Notion, click on new page. I'm going to call it breath pod home. And right away, I'm going to click here and hit paste. And here I get this message. Your file is over the five megabyte limit on the free plan. So let me show you what to do. So here I'm just going to click on the three dots and hit delete. Next, let me go back to the tab with awesome screenshot. And instead of hitting copy, I'm going to click on done. Now let me close this. And next I'm going to click on download. First time it's going to ask you a permission. So we'll just allow it. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop. All right. Next, I'm going to go back to my notion tab where I was adding a new card and I'm going to resize my window. And next I'm just going to drag my saved file right here. And now it works because the file size is less than five megabytes. Quick and easy tip. All right. So let me scroll back up and now I can add the rest of the data for the type. I'm going to select page this time. Now I'm going to copy the URL and paste it in the appropriate field. And next for the tags, I'm going to add home page. Once again, you can organize your database as you see fit. This is my way of doing it. And for the other tags, let me go back, take a look. I notice it has rounded corners. So I could add this as a tag, for example, rounded corners. And the next time you want to use those tags, they'll be here. For example, if I start typing color, you see we have colorful from the previous entry in the database, but we don't need it here. So let me remove this and let me close. So as you can see, it's already starting to take shape. Let me go back into full screen mode and let me get rid of the sidebar so that we're not distracted. So it's already looking beautiful. Now, one thing you can do is click on the three dots here, then go to layout and where you see card size, click on it. You can change it to small or to large. Now it really depends. Usually for the main tab, I like to keep it medium. That's just my own taste. And then as you're going to see in a moment, we can add new tabs here. So first of all, if I click on the tab gallery, I'm going to rename it to all. All right. Now, if I right click on all, I can hit duplicate and now it created a new tab. So think of it of a new view. It's going to make sense in a moment. So here I'm going to rename it page, then click on filter. And where you see type, I'm going to select page. And there you go. So now on this tab or view, we'll only see database entries with the type page. And by the way, if you notice here, it's a full page, but it's a weird thumbnail. So we can just click on reposition and then you can drag the image. So let me go all the way up and hit save position. Next, as you can see, there's a lot of info here. We see the name, the date, basically we see everything but you don't necessarily want that. So if that's the case, all you need to do is click on the three dots, then properties. And next to each property, you see an eye. So you can just click on it and remove it. Or you can hide all or show all. It's really up to you. Next, 
let me right click on the page view tab, hit duplicate and let's call it hero. Next click on filter and this time where you see type, we're going to select hero and deselect page. And as you may imagine now, we only see database entries with the type hero. So we have all, and we have page, we have hero, but we can do more. So let me duplicate the all tab view and let me call it per type. Now go to group and select type. So now as you can see on this view, it automatically separates each type. We have two types, so hero and page. Now you can drag a view here just to replace it. So you can really organize your swipe file as you want. Now, let me go back clicking on the three dots. If I go back to group, then let's go back to group by, and I could select by tag. Really, sky is the limit. Now let me show you a more complete swipe file. And I think you can start to see how it can really help to visually see all of that. And I got my different views here. I got by type, by tag. I even have an identity view because here I like the identity. So I can click on it, start scrolling and instantly I get the vibe of this type of dark design and it may be super appropriate for a project I'm working on. Now, let me go back. I got logo, page, as you saw, header, like for example here, I like this header, I can click on the plus sign here. And as you can see, this header is beautiful. Now the header is the logo and the navigation, so it's the whole thing. But maybe I just want to get inspired for navigation. So let me click on the nav tab, and here I have a full screen nav. So for example, I thought this one was beautiful and you can basically combine various elements. Now, of course, make sure your design stays consistent, but at least you're not gonna waste time thinking, oh, where do I start? Which type of design? I have no idea. No, now you have a lot of ideas and you need to combine them together. So let me close this and here we have the hero and we have a footer section. Now I could go on and on and add a lot more, but as you can see, you now have a simple, free and powerful way to get infinite inspiration with your own curated designs. And let me stress this again, this is completely free. Now the main benefits, apart from the fact that it's free, of course, is that you can instantly access your own curated design. It's not someone else's inspiration because sometimes on these website design galleries, you find great designs, but sometimes some designs are way too artsy. They really do not match the type of corporate website you would want to build, for example, for a client. Also, not all websites are on these website design galleries. So you may come across why you're browsing or why you're searching for I don't know which reason, maybe you're not even looking for a good design, but you stumble upon a beautiful website or one part of the page, a hero, the footer, whatever. Well, now you have a quick way to document it and quickly access it when you need it. Now, coming back to what I was saying earlier on, you really think that if you need to build a website for a plumber, for example, you really think you're going to build a website like this? Probably not. But if I go back to my swipe file, Something like this may well be a good foundation. It may seem like nothing, but you can't imagine the amount of time you're going to save. Not to mention the main benefit of creating awesome websites without ever lacking inspiration again. And cherry on the cake, you get to stay alive if you stumble upon customers like me. So you now know how to create a powerful swipe file to never run out of website design inspiration. But you may be wondering where to collect the inspiration bits in the first place. You probably already know websites like the Awards Website Design Gallery, but there are many more to get your daily inspiration dose from. So we created a cheat sheet with all of these resources that you can download by following the link in the description of this video. Because trying to reproduce some of the sites of the day from the awards.com website, for example, is not always a good idea. Actually, it can even be a pretty bad one unless you know how to avoid the red flags. So if you want to know what to avoid and how to create websites that actually reach their goals and convert, you should watch and bookmark this video and of course you'll find the link in the description below. And 